Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here again, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for String Tech Workstations. We have a Dean guitar in here that's going to get a compensated nut and that needs a little bit of a fret dress at the top end where that neck meets the body and we'll set this up for the proper radius. Brand new guitar by the way, you can see the covers are still on the pickups. 35 to 40 percent of the guitars I work on are brand new guitars that people make a beeline to my shop to get them set up properly. We also have Kevin's Orville Les Paul. This is the second one. You saw the video on the first one. It doesn't need a refret. The other one was a complete refret. This needs a, a light fret dress, compensated nut, and a setup for 10 to 46 at concert pitch. And as always, you'll get a play-by-play. -play. So we're doing both these guitars in tandem. The nut blank is cut out for the Dean guitar. We're just getting ready to do the fret dress and edge dress on this one and we did have to remove that pickup. I've got it tucked out of the way in that Ziploc bag so that we can go clean through for that fret dress at the top end. It's funny that they call it a Dean hardtail. It's got a floating tremolo. It should have been a Dean soft tail. Anyway, yeah, so once the fret dress and the compensated nut is done, we'll get to that bridge and set up that radius, the height, and then the K value of the springs to get that to balance nice uh, for a nice tremolo action. The truss rod works beautifully on this one, unlike the other one which needed to be refretted because it was going in a back bow. This one works beautifully, but we do have a little bit of discrepancy at that neck to body junction. So you got to understand the truss rod adjusts the flexible portion of the neck. It does nothing to this neck to body junction. And this is why inevitably over time you need to dress right where that tenon and mortise goes into the body. It's not that it swells up, it just doesn't budge. So we're going to do that fret dress and also this pickup needed to be taken out of the way. Like that Dean guitar, we put it in that Ziploc bag, we covered the bridge pickup. There's quite a bit of slop in uh, in that hardware. We're going to tighten that up and the, uh, the uh, lugs for the tailpiece as well, we'll tighten those up. That's pretty close to the final value. We'll see what else we need once we put those 10 to 46 strings on. The overall lay of the neck is actually pretty good on both these guitars. I've marked with chalk all the high spots and again even though this isn't a tenon and mortise it's a neck through body but still the part of the neck that sweeps in deep and thickens at that neck to body junction it's the same as a tenon and mortise joint. It doesn't flex, it doesn't move. Consequently there's some high spots there. Not a big deal, we're going to take care of that. Now on the other guitar Truss rod works beautifully on this uh, guitar at Kevin's, uh, but again, all the discrepancy at the neck to body junction, a high spot right here. I've got them marked in chalk. We'll go end to end on both these guitars and we'll take out all that fretware in the first position at the same time. Level recrown and polish, and these things will be 100%. Adjusted that truss rod, we got the neck dead straight. We will get out all this fretware. This will be like better than new when it's done. You don't finish the job with the crowning file, but you take those square edges off that are left by the leveling file. Okay, same deal for the Dean guitar. Let's do that one next. Get those high spots first. No computers or CNC machines, just the tech deck and a good single cut mill file. Been doing this for years. Correcting many times with the CNC machine misses. And that's pretty well it for the leveling. Okay, we're ready for the crowning file. All that squareness off. Still got a ways to go on this guitar yet. Uh, it was never set up properly. I mean, it's a beautiful looking guitar, but it doesn't do you much good if you can't play it. Okay, we're just finishing up this edge dress. And this is common actually with uh, new guitars. So essentially what it is, is the, uh, the guitar is made of wood. As the wood seasons and it shrinks a little bit, well, the frets don't shrink. The wood does. So that's why you end up getting those sharp edges. That side's taken care of. We'll go to the next side. Now, since I'm right-handed, I reach over the guitar to get that other side. And once again, you can hear that file grab.
Good. There we go, much better. These are the blocks that I've been shipping out to you guys. This gets rid of those tooling marks of the file, and at the same time, it flexes over those crowns, and you can use it for buffing out that edge dress as well. Now this is cloth back, 400 grit, so it doesn't tear apart. And we're gonna switch up to 600 now before we do our final buff. I usually just run my fingers over there and just see if I can detect anything. Okay, now we've got our 600 grit, and this is going to give us a much nicer finish. Of course, it's a lot harder on the paper, the paperback sandpaper. You can see it's pretty rough on the on the paperback sandpaper. That's why I start with that cloth back first to get rid of most of those barbs. tooling marks of the file first. The edges on this one are pretty good. I didn't have to, to run the uh, mill file over the edges. I'm just kind of smoothing them a little bit. And then we'll uh, step this up to 600. This 400 is pretty well taken care of uh, all of the wear marks in those first few frets. There's our 600. Well, as you can see, there's quite a bit of slop. When I put that on there, huh, look at this. You hit that with your hand, you'll throw the intonation out. So we're going to take care of all this slop. We'll wrap those threads, tighten that up, tighten those tolerances up. You know, overall, I actually prefer these bridges to the, to the Gibson bridges. There we go. Okay, that's kind of firmed it up. Still able to adjust it instead of this. Look at this. Good. Yeah, that's good and snug. Okay, that's much better. Good, that's good and firm. A little bit of a different story on this one. Now, because the ground wire goes to that lug, I wrap this lug only in aluminum tape. And that'll kind of snug it up, and it's not going to disrupt the grounding qualities of, uh, of that lug that's closest to the cavity. Let's try that bridge for fit now. Yeah, it's still kind of sloppy. We're going to slip some heat shrink tubing over. So I'll coax that down with the wood. So we'll slice that off. Just rotate that. Same thing again on this side. Okay, let's see what we got now. Beautiful. That's what we want. All that slop, it's all gone. Everything's rock solid. Now we'll set up the intonation. Now that we've tightened up all that hardware, look at the press fit on this. That's way tighter than any Gibson I've seen lately. Well, this is the wrap-up for the 10 to 46 of concert pitch. Uh, this is the Orville, the second Orville, actually, that uh, Kevin dropped off. And, of course, the frets are level dress, crown to polish. This thing is slick as butter to play. And the bridge is intonated. The, those saddles weren't even close. Everything's rock solid. Nothing moves. It's not just that it's perfectly in tune, end to end, every note, every chord, every fret, but it'll stay that way, too. I'll pull it out in the studio inside and uh, plug it in and let you hear it.